Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Happy Wednesday to you all. Pray that you've been having an enjoyable day. Thank the Lord for allowing us to be at, in this place at this moment. It has been an active day for me. The Lord has seen fit to allow us to gather once again. And we are ever grateful to him and to who he is in our lives. If you will, right where you are, pause with me for a word of prayer. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Father, we thank you for the blessed privilege to be able to be where we are at this very moment. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to engage in Bible study. Thank you for your holy writ. Thank you that the blueprint for our lives is found in the Holy Scripture. Tonight, Father, as we prepare to go into your word, I pray that you would open up our ears to hear, our hearts to receive, and our spirits to obey what thus saith the Lord. Help us to see new in the scriptures. Help us not just to read the word, but to meditate upon it day and night, that we may be able to apply it to our everyday living. Help that with that which we receive tonight, let us not hoard it, but share it with others. Father, we give you the glory. Father, we give you the honor. We give you the praise. We thank you for Jesus Christ. And now, Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, let them, Lord God, be acceptable in your sight. For you are our strength and you are our redeemer. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And amen. God bless you all once again. Hope you are well where you are. If you have your Bible or your devices, meet me in the gospel according to Matthew chapter number 8, verse number 1. The gospel according to Matthew chapter number 8, verse number 1. Last Wednesday, I shared with you we were going to be beginning a teaching series for the remainder of 2020 on the miracles of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospels record over 30 miracles that Jesus Christ performed, and we want to spend time for the remainder of this year dealing with those miracles. We may not do the entire 30, but we're going to commit the remaining Wednesdays that we do gather together to talk about the miracles of the Lord Jesus Christ. As you're going to Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 8, verse number 1, I want to take this time to, again, thank each one of you, Bible Bay Church, Tallahassee family, who I'm blessed to pastor. Thank you for diligence and faithfulness and making sure that you are in place on Wednesdays and Sundays to continue to receive the word of the Lord. But even those who are friends and visitors of our ministry who he cannot rivalry to participate in Bible shed study and Sunday spiritual encounter with us, thank you for being a part of what God is doing in this season. Today I had a chance to talk to one of my dearest friends, Pastor Roosevelt Rogers, who at this time is also leading his church in Bible study through virtual means. And we were just sharing about how good God has been, even in the pandemic season, how we are seeing God do great things in this season. And there are some of you who are watching this evening who can attest to that, that you've seen God do some great things. You've seen your money grow. Some of you are closing on houses that God is blessing you to buy in this season. And I said to Pastor Rogers, what I want to say to you tonight is, who are we to dictate how God wants to work, even in this season? A pandemic may discomfort us, it may, it may distract us, may detour us, but it does not have more power than the Lord Jesus Christ. And I am ever grateful that even in the season that we find ourselves in, in our cities and in our states and in our country, that the Lord is more superior than that which we're going through. I'm not saying that this is not a real situation. I'm not telling you not to adhere to the counsel that we receive from medical experts. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that even in our wisdom to follow those guidelines, God is still showing himself to be strong, mighty, and faithful. And so the remainder of this year, we're going to see the miraculous hand of the Lord and what he's doing in the text and how we can still see him doing that. Because I still believe that God is still doing great work in 2020. Again, Matthew chapter number 8, verses 1 through 4, there you will find our assignment for this evening. The New Living Translation reads this way. Large crowd followed Jesus as he came down the mountainside. Suddenly, a man with leprosy approached him and knelt before him. Lord, the man said, if you are willing, you can help, you can heal me and make me clean or make me whole. Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. And instantly the leprosy disappeared. 
Then Jesus said to him, don't tell anyone about this. Instead, go to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses. For those who have been healed of leprosy, this will be the public testimony that you have been cleansed. Tonight I want to teach regarding to a man healed of leprosy. A man healed of leprosy. A man healed of leprosy. So in order for you to understand Matthew chapter number 8, you must look at the beginning words of verse number 1. It says that a large crowd followed Jesus as he came down. Now when you see that he came down, you must ask yourself a question. You must ask yourself a question. He comes down off the mountainside, so here's the question. When did he go up? When did he go up? Because here, his action is coming down off a mountain, which lets you know that preceding chapter number 8, verse number 1, Jesus went up on a mountain. Now, if you are a student of the text, or you just take time to be diligent in your research, I would tell you to go back to chapter number 5, verse number 1 of Matthew. Chapter number 5, verse number 1 of Matthew. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 1, to Matthew chapter 7, verse number 29, that encompasses the, the Sermon on the Mount. Chapter 5, verse 1, chapter 7, verse 29, all encompass the Sermon on the Mount. It's in chapter number 5, verse number 1, where it reads, One day as he saw the crowds gathering, Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach them. It is in chapter 5, verse number 1, that Jesus goes up the mountainside, and it's chapter 8, verse 1, that he comes down the mountainside. So in chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7, Jesus is on the mountainside teaching what we know as the Sermon on the Mount. There are various teachings that are involved in the Sermon on the Mount, but those chapters 5, 6, and 7 encompass Sermon on the Mount. Jesus now, in chapter number 8, verse number 1, comes down from a place where he once went up. So, the large crowd followed Jesus as he came down the mountainside. Now listen, he went up the mountainside because of a large crowd, and a large crowd follows him as he comes down. Jesus has been in a teaching posture for three chapters, chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7. He's been teaching them great principles, giving them great parables, giving them great nuggets and great word in those three chapters. He has now come down from a, from a teaching posture of sin to come and teach them now, for, for come down the mountain high from teaching. As soon as he comes down, the crowd follows him, says the word of God, from the mountainside. Verse number two, suddenly, immediately, at haste, a man with leprosy approaches him. Now you have to understand now, what is leprosy? Leprosy is a chronic, curable, infectious disease which causes lesions and nerve issues. It is, again, a chronic, curable, infectious disease which causes lesions and nerve issues. So now this man approaches Jesus with leprosy. Know anything about anybody with leprosy based on Old Testament? Before you can approach someone, if you have leprosy, or you can approach me, and I don't have leprosy, you must cry out, unclean, unclean, and then I, the clean one, beckon you to come to where I am. This man approaches Jesus, and the text does not say to us that he cries out, unclean, unclean. This man should not even be inside of the gates, because there was a special place for, the, for those who had leprosy, which was outside the gate. They were put in a place outside the gate where other people with leprosy found themselves. This man approaches Jesus as he comes down the mountainside. Now, I don't want to be a heretic, and I don't want to be isogenical in my teaching and try to, to paint a picture I don't know anything about. What I know is, is that those who have leprosy were not allowed to, to approach the clean without crying out, unclean, unclean. Because, because it was an infectious disease that, that if you didn't have it, you could get it. So therefore, you had to cry out, unclean, unclean, so that those who were clean were aware that you were not clean. And now they dealt with you differently. This man 
approaches Jesus based on verse number two. Now, he approaches Jesus. We don't read where he cried out unclean. We don't read where Jesus told him to come forth. He approaches Jesus. Now, in the book of Leviticus, chapter number 14, verses 2 through 32. Leviticus 14, chapter, verses number 2 through 32, it walks you through what will take place for the person who has leprosy. We'll get to that at the end of verse number 4. But I want you to understand that now because this man has an infectious, chronic, but curable disease that causes lesions and nerve issues. This man has a condition. And he approaches Jesus, the Bible said, and he knelt before him. Now, based on him kneeling, it lets you know he's close enough to Jesus where his kneeling is seen. Mm. This man has a infectious disease, chronic and curable, but infectious. He, he approaches Jesus. He kneels down before Jesus and then says, Lord, the man said, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Tonight, I want to point out seven C's, seven C's, the letter C, seven C's that we will learn in four verses. Seven C's, the letter C, that we learn in four verses. The first C is the crowd. The Bible says in verse 1, the large crowd followed Jesus. So the first C is crowd. The crowd has followed Jesus. So now this is important now. Jesus goes up the mountainside, chapter 5, verse 1, because of a crowd, the Bible says. The crowd gathered, so Jesus goes up the mountainside, and he sits down. He sits down. So this is now, the crowd is standing, he's sitting, and he begins to teach his disciples and all those who were there. He comes down the mountainside, and the crowd follows Jesus. So the first C is the crowd. When you're studying your Bible, brothers and sisters, it's always important to never overlook the things that you see. It's always important. Every word in your study matters to that which you are studying. Never forget that. Never add to it, nor take away from it. Every word in that verse matters. The large crowds follow Jesus. The first C is crowd. The second C is also in verse number one. The second C is the Christ. The large crowd followed Jesus. Jesus is the Christ. So understand this now. Christ is a description of Jesus. All right? It's important now. It's a description of Jesus. Christ in the New Testament is Messiah in the Old Testament. It's a description. It means the anointed one. So, so Messiah in Hebrew is Christ in Greek. It means the anointed one. Jesus, the Christ, right? So Christ is a description of who Jesus is. Jesus, based on Matthew chapter number one, around verse number 21, means, means the Lord saves or Jehovah saves, right? He says, save people from their sin. That's what Jesus means. Christ is a description of him. He's a, the, the anointed one, right? So Jesus, Jesus is savior. Christ is the anointed one who is the savior. It's important to know now. So the second C is the Christ. The large crowd, first C, followed Jesus, second C. And he came down the mountainside. Here comes the third C. Suddenly a man with leprosy. Here's the third C. The third C, third, third C is the condition. His condition is leprosy. His condition is leprosy. We never learn the man's name. The text describes him based on his condition, not based on his name. Mm -hmm. Imagine, if you will, you have a condition that is so deplorable that your name is irrelevant because your condition is known. Come on. This is, this is important now. It's important. Because those who had leprosy had lesions, which is visible. Nerve issues may not be visible all the way, but at least we're visible. So now people can see that he has a chronic, curable, infectious disease. He has a condition. And so now this man, based on the text, is known by his condition. Let me also give this to you. 
Bible scholars, that we're reading in Matthew 8, 1 through 4, can also be found in Mark chapter 1, verses 40 through 44, and Luke chapter 5, verses 12 through 14. So again, we're reading right now in our assignment is also found in Mark chapter 1, verses 40 through 44, and in Luke chapter 5, verses 12 through 14, the synoptic gospels. So if you read it, it may read a little bit differently, but it's talking about the same situation here. So now we have the crowd, first seed. Christ, second seed. Condition, the third seed. He has leprosy. The Bible says suddenly a man with leprosy. We know his gender, but we also know his condition. We know his gender and his condition. And this evening, you may be a woman with a condition. And there are people who only talk about you based on your condition, not based on your gender or your genealogy. Oh my. This man, we don't know anything about this man's genealogy. We know about his condition. He has leprosy. Mm -hmm. So now we have the crowd, verse 1. We have the Christ, verse 1. We have the condition, verse 2. It says, a man with leprosy approached him and knelt before him. Lord, the man said, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean or make me whole. This is important now. The man says to Jesus, if you're willing. He's not questioning his abilities. He's questioning if he's willing. Mm. Lord, have mercy. Mm. There is a difference. Lord, I know you're able, but are you willing? Yeah. Why is this important now? Because it may not be a part of his will to heal the man. Mm. So listen now. Him not healing me is not because he can't do it. Yeah. Right? The Bible says in the book of the book of, of Daniel, chapter number three, Shadrach, Mish, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were told the next time you hear the trumpet, you will bow, because the first time they heard it, they didn't bow. And so the king got very upset. The next time you hear the trumpet, you shall bow. And they told him, we will not bow. We will not bow. And then he, then he said this. They, said, they knew the result of not bowing was the fiery furnace. They knew the punishment. They said, we will not bow. We will not bow to you. The king was so upset, he was visibly upset, and they were told, if you don't bow, you'll be thrown into the fiery furnace. And they said, that's fine. And they said that, that, that to the point, paraphrasing, they believe that, that the Lord will spare their life in the fire. And they said, even if he doesn't do it, we still won't bow to you. Look at this now. The punishment for not bowing to the idol was the fiery furnace. These three Hebrew boys said, we're not going to bow regardless. We know what the punishment is, so we're not going to bow. Then they said, because we believe our, our God will rescue us, save us, protect us. But if he doesn't do it, mm -hmm. still not going, we're still not going to buy. That last point is important. Their point is, even if God doesn't do it, it's not a question of could he do it, because he could. But if he doesn't do it, we still won't buy. This man here is saying, Lord, if you're willing, your abilities are known, but is it your will? Yeah. Lord, have mercy. Yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, sometimes... God not responding, sometimes God taking, taking too long, sometimes God responding in a certain way is not a lack of able, it's not his will. Mm -hmm. It's not his will. This man's wording is important. I told you earlier, I'll tell you again. When you study your Bible, every word in what you study matters to what you are studying. He says, Lord, the man said, now Lord is important because Jesus now he is Savior and he's Lord. Savior means that he's saving us from our sin. Lord means that he's ruler, right? So now, a lot of us have no problem making him our Savior. We don't want him to be our Lord. Mm -hmm. I want to save me from my sin, so I don't experience damnation. I don't want to submit to his Lordship, because that means I have to submit my will to his will. Yeah. This man approaches the Christ by saying, Lord. Mm -hmm. So now, he's acknowledging that he is ruler. You can't be ruler and not be able. Lord, I've mm -hmm. you got that one. So it's not a question of ability. I know your lordship. He said, Lord, the man said, if you are willing. Now, why is this wording important? It's important because the man is submitting to the realization that if it's going to happen, 
You have to be willing, Lord, to do it. Yeah. Be willing, Lord, to do it. I know you can do it, but are you willing to do it? And I'll say this to you. When, 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 when people ask you to go somewhere with them or you make plans, you ought to make plans, as James says, in this way, to do the Lord's will. When I was growing up, my grandmother and my grandfather and the older saints would say things like, you know, I see you tomorrow, it's the Lord's will. You down south say, I see you tomorrow, it's the Lord's will, and the creek don't rise. Don't know what that means. <laughs> I'm not from the south like that, but I know what it means the Lord's will. What they're saying is that, it, it, look to my own, I desire to be there with you. If it's the Lord's will, which means that if I don't show up, it wasn't God with me yeah. to be there. Because what they're saying is, I may not survive the night. But if I make it tonight, I plan on being there. If it's the Lord's will, which means that, that my life is in the Lord's hands, mm -hmm. not my own. My personal desire is to be there with you. I don't know the perfect will of God for my life, therefore I'm submitted to his will. Yeah. The, the man of leprosy is saying, Lord, if you are willing. Think about this now. This man, based on the order of the Jewish law that we will read about in Leviticus before we conclude this evening, this man broke all protocol to approach Jesus. This man disregarded the crowd to approach Jesus. This man, this man who had a condition that is known based on text, pursued the Savior because he was tired of his condition. Yeah. Lord, if you're willing, you can heal me and make me whole. So we learn the crowd, verse 1. The Christ, verse 1. The condition, verse 2. Fourth C, the compassion. Look at verse 3. The compassion. Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said. I am willing, he said. Look at this now. That, that, that's the compassion. Jesus didn't stole him for being out of protocol. Yeah. He didn't stole him for approaching him without permission. He didn't stole him for disregarding the crowd. Jesus showed compassion to the man. Shame on us who are followers of Christ not to follow his example of compassion one to another. Mm -hmm. Let me say this and get in trouble when I say it. If your political ideology has you more stoic than compassionate, shame on you. What am I saying? If you being a Democrat, you being a Republican, you being independent is more important to you than being compassionate to your neighbor, shame on you. If your economic status is more important to you than compassion, shame on you. What am I meaning? If because you drive good, dress good, eat good, live good, means that you're more important to somebody who is homeless, shame on you. The Jesus that I believe in would stop for the homeless. He would show compassion for even a person not a part of your political party. And we have become, in America today, more proud of our party affiliation than compassion. Come on. Than compassion. Than compassion. If a man or woman, boy or girl, is shedding blood, compassion ought to draw you nigh, not you saying, well, they're, they're a Democrat. Yeah. They're a Republican. They're independent. Jesus didn't show this man for approaching him. He showed compassion. The man said in verse 3, if you're willing. Jesus says in verse 4, I am willing. Lord, have mercy. Mm -hmm. I am willing. Here's how awesome this is. The man has leprosy. He has a chronic, curable, infectious disease that bears lesions and nerve issues. The man approaches Jesus, disregarding the crowd, disregarding protocol, approaches Jesus and says, Lord, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me whole or make me clean. The Bible says, before Jesus even says, I am willing, the Bible says in verse number four, Jesus reached out and touched him. Now, the disease is infectious. So you really shouldn't be touching the man with, a, with, a, with an infectious disease. Mm -hmm. But Jesus is not you. Mm -hmm. He reached out, touched the man. His reaching and his touching is a sign of compassion. He does to the man what others hadn't done. Mm. He does for the man what others haven't done. 
He acknowledges him, not on condition. Not on condition. Why is this important now? Jesus sees the man based on what he's going to do for the man, not based on his condition. Mm. See the crowd? Verse 1. The Christ? Verse 1. The condition? Verse 2. The compassion? Verse 3. He said, he just reached out, touched him, and then says these three words, I am willing. Those three words are the answer to his statement in verse number three. I am willing. I am willing. He said, now, here is the fifth C. The fifth C. We have the crowd. We have the Christ. We have the condition. We have the compassion. Here's the fifth C in verse number three. The cure. Lord have mercy. Mm. The cure. The cure is be healed. Be healed. Jesus says five words in this verse. He says, I am willing, those three words, be healed, those are two words. You know math. Three plus two is five. I see you, Nicole Jackson. Three plus, three plus two is five. He says, I am willing. He said, be healed. That's the cure. That's the cure. Jesus' words spoke to his condition. Mm -hmm. This now, this now, his reach and his touch acknowledges that I see you. Yes. His words speak to the condition. Yes. Lord Jesus, yes. help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. This man happens to be downtrodden. This man has been living with his leprosy. We don't know how long he had leprosy. What we know is Jesus does for the man what others didn't do. Others didn't do. He reached out, reached out, touched the man. Mm -hmm. He didn't run from the man's condition. He drew, he drew nigh to the man. The man is in a kneeling posture based on verse number two. And Jesus reached out and touched the man. The man is still in the kneeling posture based if you're reading it succinctly. And Jesus reached out, touches the man, and then said, I am willing. Hmm. I am willing. This man's condition has put him in a prostrate posture, Lord mm. Jesus. Lord Jesus, has your condition caused you to bow? Come on. Has your condition caused you to kneel? Has your condition caused you to surrender? We see the crowd, the Christ, the condition, the compassion, the cure. Here's the sixth C. It's in verse number four. The sixth seed. Then Jesus said to him, don't tell anyone about this. Instead, go to the priest and let him examine you. Sixth C is the council. The council. The council. It's important now. C-O-U-N-S-E-L. The council. He's giving him counsel. He's counseling the man on what to do now. You've been cured. Now let me counsel you. You've been cured. Let me counsel you. Because, because the man was known by his condition and now been made whole, let's now fall in line with protocol, fall in line with order. Now, based on the law of Moses, you need to go do the following things. Mm. Let me counsel you now, because we want to make sure that you continue to walk in what just took place. Let's, let's fall back in line. You, you came out of protocol to approach me and got cured. Let's get back in protocol based on the order of the day. Come on. The council. Then Jesus said to him, don't tell anyone about this. And said, go to the priest, let him examine you. Go to the priest, let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. All of that is a part of the council. He's telling him, go to the priest, follow the law of Moses, and bring the required offering necessary. Right? So now we saw the crowd, verse one, the Christ, verse one, the condition, verse two, the compassion, verse three, the cure, verse three, the counsel, verse four. I told you at the beginning there were seven seeds. I've given you six, which means that I owe you one. Here's the seventh one. Seventh one is that last sentence. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. 
Here's the seven C, the confirmation. The confirmation. The confirmation. He said, this will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. It's, a, it's confirmation. Confirmation. Now, let's do the text proper. Go with me, if you will, on your Bible, your device. In your Bible, your device is Leviticus, chapter number 14. Leviticus, chapter number 14. Jesus references in, in Matthew 8, 1 through 4, about the law of Moses, Moses pertaining to a personal leprosy. Leviticus 14, 1 through 32, deals with cleansing from skin diseases. I'm not going to read all the verses. It's your time to have Bible study with yourself. But I want to read a few verses of scriptures if I can. Leviticus 14, verse 1 said, And the Lord said to Moses, verse 2, The following instructions are for those seeking ceremonial purification from a skin disease which is talking about leprosy. The Lord now gives instructions to Moses in Leviticus 14, 1 through 32, what has to take place for a person seeking to, to, have to be purified from a skin disease or leprosy. Those who have been healed must be brought to the priest. Remember now, Jesus told him, go to the priest. So Jesus now is operating in order based on the law. Right? He said, who will examine them at a place outside the camp. Now, I told mention to you that, that a person who had leprosy was always left outside the camp or outside the gate. This man approaches Jesus coming down the mountainside. He says here, who will examine them at a place outside the camp. If the priest finds that someone has been healed of a serious skin disease, which is leprosy, who perform a purification ceremony using two live birds, that are ceremonially clean, a stick of cedar, some scarlet yarn, and a hyssop branch. Hyssop is known as cleansing, a hyssop branch. They see the priest will order that one bird be slaughtered over a clay pot filled with fresh water. Then goes on talking about what else should take place. Look at verse number eight. The person being purified must then wash their clothes, shave off all their hair, and bathe themselves in water. Then they will be ceremonially clean and they return to the camp. Now why is this important? Jesus tells him to go to the priest and follow the order of the law of Moses. Why is this important? Because although the man has been cured by Jesus, he has to fall in line with this order so he can be restored back to the place. Mm. Ah, Jesus, mm. Lord have mercy. Mm. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Look what it says now. In the verse 8, however, they must remain outside their tents for seven days. So even though it's acknowledged that you are clean, you still have to be restored, but also be set apart. Set apart means to be sanctified. You have to be set apart for seven days. They, the priest acknowledges that you've been cleansed. That you've been made whole. You, you, you will be restored, but for seven days you got to stay outside the camp. The Bible talks about in the book of Numbers that, that when, when, when Miriam, Moses' sister, spoke ill of Moses' wife, Miriam, and spoke ill of Moses' wife, spoke ill of Moses' leadership, how he was dealing with things, and she got instantly hit with leprosy. And how the Lord, and Moses was the Lord and interceded on behalf of Miriam. People refused to move on without Miriam being there. With the guy in prayer, and the Lord said to Moses, even a person who had leprosy must still be outside the camp for seven days. They have to wait for seven days for her leprosy to be cleansed. Jesus says to this man here that you are healed and made whole. But you must go to the priest and follow the order of Leviticus chapter number 14. Why is this important? Because the confirmation is going to come mm. when he follows the order. Come on. Lord, am I saying come to on. you? Say to you, everything the Lord does, he does in order. Mm -hmm. He does in order. God will never do anything counter to his word. Amen. Tonight, we deal with the miracle of the Lord Jesus Christ in, in Matthew chapter 8, 1 through 4, and we saw seven seeds. We saw the crowd in verse 1, the Christ in verse 1, saw the condition in verse 2, the compassion in verse 3, the cure in verse 3, the counsel in in verse 4, and the confirmation in verse 4. I'm going to conclude this way. Of all those seeds, number 2 
becomes number one. I'll do it to you again. Of all seven seeds, number two becomes number one. What does that mean? The Christ in number two is priority number one. Because, because, because C1 and C3 through seven don't matter if C number two wasn't there. The Christ is what matters. Yes. This man has a condition that he's known by. And no one has the power to cleanse the man but the Christ. Yes. My point to you and my conclusion is this. Stop going to people who don't have the power to heal, deliver, or set you free from your condition. But there is a man. Mm -hmm. It's a Sunday morning. I would have preached that. There is a man. Come on. Who can heal you, deliver you, make you whole, and set you free from your condition. Be set free from being defined, being described, being determined, and being held bound by your condition. Because John 8 says that he whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you. Tonight we learn about another miracle of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you that tonight, based on Matthew 8, 1 through 4, we saw what Jesus does. Thank you for the compassion he displays here. And tonight we bear witness that because of, of the compassion of Christ, we are still here. We are still here. I pray for all those who have logged on and watching virtually, watching live. I pray for those who want to watch the rebroadcast. I pray, Lord God, that tonight's teaching will not fall on, on deaf ears. It will not fall on stony ground or thorny, thorny ground or the wayside. It will fall on good ground and bring forth a good harvest. Be glorified in all that we do. God, continue to get the glory in us, through us, and around us. And we promise, we commit we covenant with you that we will give you the glory that is due unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Bless you all this evening. Pray that God will continue to do great things in your life. I encourage you, those of you who are not a part of our household, the Bible Base Church, Tallahassee, to visit our website at www.bbctallahassee.com to learn more about our church, about our, 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 our governance and our structure. If you feel led to give, to our church financially. It's an online giving button there, or you can mail it in. Whatever the Lord press on your heart to give, we will be we would be happy to receive that, that gift. I pray that God will bless you. I will encourage you to share tonight's teaching with those on your social media sites. They may also receive the word of the Lord. Listen, I'm not trying to replace your pastor if you're part of a local church. You need to be faithfully giving, seeding, tithing, and, and tuning into your local church. Amen. This is not a competition. My desire is to teach the word of the Lord Jesus Christ that we may all be edified and most importantly, he be glorified. So we always sign off. Remember, don't just be blessed, live blessed.